Welcome to South Asia Today, a show that provides you the glimpses of South Asia. I am your host, Shivangi Mishra. Let's begin with the headlines first. New Delhi embraces substantially with launch of green hydrogen fuel cell bus. Casio's G-Shock turns 40 in style. An Awami Action Committee protest against free hike at Karakoram University in illegally occupied Gilgit, Baltistan. Let's begin the show. First time in history of India as the country unveils a groundbreaking innovation, India's very first hydrogen fuel cell bus. This remarkable bus signifies a significant leap towards a greener, and more eco-conscious era of public transportation in New Delhi. Join us as we witness the launch of New Delhi's first ever hydrogen fuel cell bus, inaugurated by Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas, Hardeep Singh Puri. Have a look. In order to promote green transportation, Petroleum Minister Hardeep Singh Puri unveiled India's first green hydrogen fuel cell bus in New Delhi. This event marked a significant step towards promoting sustainable and environmentally friendly transportation. Vehicles with hydrogen fuel cells, in which hydrogen mixes with oxygen to produce water and energy to power a battery, can refuel in minutes and have a much longer range than battery electric vehicles, but infrastructure is lacking and it is less energy efficient. This is our duty to the next generation that we move from the fossil fuel and internal comb combustion engine to a new green mobility. And I want to tell you that the progress I have seen in this area, and I am not saying this because I happen just now to be the Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas, but the pro progress I have seen in my short tenure is nothing less than absolutely revolutionary. Under this initiative, Indian Oil Corporation has started a carefully planned program to test 15 fuel cell buses that are powered by green hydrogen in real-world situations. These trials will encompass designated routes in Delhi, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh. Fuel cells, the heart of these green hydrogen-powered buses, employ hydrogen and air to generate electricity for propulsion. These buses are environmentally friendly, with the only byproduct being water, offering a stark contrast to conventional buses running on diesel and petrol. India's endeavours in the realm of low carbon development, including emerging fuels like hydrogen and biofuels, are central to these efforts. Hydrogen is poised to be a game changer in India's ambitious quest to achieve net zero emissions by the year 2070. In line with the Honorable Prime Minister's vision for a national green hydrogen mission, today's flag off of green hydrogen fuel cell bus is a testament to Indian oil's steadfast commitment towards devising sustainable solutions for greening the mobility sector. Last year, New Delhi approved a 174.9 billion rupees incentive plan for the fuel, which is made using renewable energy and without producing greenhouse gases. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has set a target to produce 5 million tonnes of green hydrogen by 2030. And this launch marks just the beginning of an exciting journey. India plans to multiply its fleet of hydrogen fuel cell buses, ensuring that sustainable, eco-friendly transportation becomes accessible to all. With zero emissions, this bus heralds a brighter future for New Delhi, reducing the city's carbon footprint and improving air quality. Moving on, Japanese companies have been putting great focus on the enrichment of people's life all over the world. Casio's iconic G-Shock watches have reached a remarkable 40 years of rough durability and style. G-Shock remains an icon in the watch industry. It continues to inspire with its commitment to durability and innovation. 
Even Casio's intellectual property and licensing team successfully registered this year as a three-dimensional trademark for G-Shock watches in Japan. The year 2023 is special for the Japanese watch company Casio. Casio celebrated its 40th anniversary of the G-Shock, which is a significant milestone for this iconic watch brand known for its durability and innovation. G-Shock watches have been a favorite among sportspersons and outdoor enthusiasts for decades. Casio frequently promotes the event across the world in order to establish G-Shock globally. It introduces familiarity as well as its purpose and capacity to fit into modern lifestyles. G-Shock consequently achieved significant advancements. え、スケ この え、Based on 40 years of function development and marketing efforts, G-Shock will gain more global admirers in near future. Casio's intellectual property and licensing team successfully registered a three-dimensional trademark for G-Shock watches in Japan. G-Shock is already registered as a general trademark with a shape, logo and name. A three-dimensional trademark guarantees rights only by shape. It is the first case of Japan's three-dimensional trademark. The most famous three-dimensional trademark is Colonel Sanders' statue of Kentucky Fried Chicken KFC. For registration, the Casio's IPR team promoted its trademark to patent office as how G-Shock's original design is familiar to the people. え、その識別力をですね、え、発揮しているかどうかというところがポイントになっております。で、これが特許庁の方では非常にハードルが高いと。自職 Casio is adamant that a three-dimensional trademark must have an original square-shaped design. This form was created in an effort to protect glass-like parts, providing those a shock-absorbing toughness.
Casio's trial lasted for more than three years before it was registered. It is being offered with pride and esteem for G-Shock by Casio. Now we take a look at some happenings in Asia in a segment called Asia Watch. In a busy street next to their former orphanage, a group of Iraqis are gathered behind kiosks, selling anything from sandwiches to paintings. This is part of the Baghdad Gate project, an initiative that hopes to help orphans and those who used to live in orphanages around Baghdad become self-reliant. The Iraqi Home Foundation for Creativity is a non-governmental organization established in 2004 with the aim to sheltering some homeless children and orphans in Baghdad. Not only this initiative allowed them the chance to become self-reliant, it also enabled the participants to give back to the orphanage. While all the money made in the kiosk go to those running them, 10% is donated to a fund that supports the education of orphan girls. <laughs> Bulgarian police scuffle with supporters of the ultra-nationalist Vazrazan party during the protest against the policies of the pro-Western government. Hundreds of protesters opposing the EU members' support for Ukraine and its war with Russia gathered in the front of Parliament building, waving flags, blowing whistles and demanding early elections in the country, which has gone through five polls in the past two years. The protesters also called for a closure of NATO military bases. Demonstrators ended their walk in front of the grandiose monument to the Soviet Army that had been put under scaffolding for security reasons. Some of them clashed with police who tried to stop them from getting close to the monument. The Bulgarian government had recently decided to remove the monument from its current location. Three Palestinians were wounded in clashes along the Israel-Gaza border, Palestinian officials said. Israeli military said it was striking Hamas targets in Gaza in response to riots. In what appears to be a renewed wave of violence on the border, Palestinians in Gaza have been holding protests along the separation fence for eight consecutive days, breaking from a period of relative calm. Youths have thrown stones and improvised explosive devices at Israeli troops who have responded with live fire. The Israeli military said in a statement it had struck Hamas targets adjacent to the security border in the Gaza Strip in response to riots and shots being fired at soldiers. Gazans say the demonstrations are to protest issues including the treatment of Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails and Jewish visits to the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound, a site holy to both Muslims and Jews who know it as a Temple Mount. South Korea put on its first large-scale military parade in a decade with weapons ranging from ballistic missiles to tanks rolling through Seoul in a show of force as it takes a tougher stance against North Korea. The parade marked the country's Armed Forces Day, normally a muted event relative to the massive events the North has staged under leader Kim Jong-un that includes strategic weapons such as intercontinental ballistic missiles ICBMs. The highlight was a two-kilometer parade through Seoul's main commercial and business district to the bustling Gwangwamun area that is a gate to a sprawling palace in the heart of the capital. 
crowds lined the streets in the rain to take in a rare display of military hardware up close, cheering as troops, tanks, missiles and underwater drones passed by. Moving on to illegally occupied territory of Gilgit Baltistan, where students and members of the Awami Action Committee have come together to protest against a contentious issue, the fee hike at Karakoram University. The university's decision to increase fees has triggered a wave of discontent, with many students and their families struggling to meet the financial demands. We have a report. <laughs> The university students and their parents protested against the unreasonable fee hike at the Karakoram International University in Gilgit. The alleged fee hike in the university tuition fee to the tune of 134% to 150% has resented the students seeking higher education. <laughs> Amid skyrocketing inflation and absence of other higher education institutions in the region, the students have no other option but to continue their studies in the university. While the university representatives are allegedly trying to brush the matter under the carpet, the student demonstrators believe Islamabad has cut the budget allocation for higher education and the Karakoram University has raised the tuition fee taking guard of budget cut. The impoverished region of Gilgit Baltistan has only few higher education institutions. The unprecedented fee hike has certainly dashed all hopes of students and their parents to the ground. The parents and the students blame the local administration for deploying force to subvert their movement against the ruling dispensation and the university. Apart from the administration, the students also blame the university's vice chancellor who they accuse of valuing in luxury despite knowing the situation of the Karakoram University. The apathetic attitude of the local administration and the university officials has broken the hopes and aspirations of thousands of youngsters in Gilgit, Baltistan. Now we take you to the culturally rich city of Bhumneshwar, where the exciting tourism fair took place right in the heart of this magnificent city. The tourism fair was an attempt to uphold the multidimensional aspects of incredible India. The fair was held to encourage travel among the travel community and Odisha travel enthusiasts. So whether you are an interpret explorer, a nature lover or simply looking to relax on beautiful beaches, Odisha has something special in store for you. India remains one of the most ethnically diverse countries in the world. Bhubaneswar, also known as the city of temples, is an ancient city in eastern India that is a thriving center for art and culture in the state of Odisha. Recently, in a bid to boost tourism among the travel fraternity and travel enthusiast of Odisha, Blue Eye India Private Limited, an established name in the field of tourism promotion in India, 
hosted a three-day National Tourism Fair 2023 in Bhubaneswar. This three-day travel trade show was organized by the Ministry of Tourism. Exhibitors from Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Gujarat and Himachal Pradesh put their stalls at the tourism fair. टूरिस्ट को जो यहाँ फुटफॉल बढ़ा है उसका दो तीन चीज़ें मेन कारण है सर उसका एक तो ये है कि यहाँ पे जो साफ सफाई है सर और यहाँ पे जो टूरिज्म के लिए जो स्टेप्स लिए गए हैं बढ़ावा दिया गया है यहाँ पे सारे इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर्स हैं जो हमारे रोड्स हैं वो काफ़ी अच्छे हैं सर और यहाँ पर टूरिस्ट डेस्टिनेशन भी काफ़ी अच्छी तरह से मैनेज हो रहा है और यहाँ पर जो रहने के भी जो ऑप्शन हैं यहाँ पर बहुत सारे होटल्स नए खुल गए हैं फाइव स्टार ऑप्शन से लेकर बजट कैटेगरी तक जो कि टूरिस्ट लोगों के लिए बहुत ही अच्छा ऑप्शन दे रहा है The government of Odisha has taken various steps from time to time to promote tourism by pronouncing progressive policies on tourism. The demand for tourism has changed as a result of the travel industry's tremendous rise. Over time, there has also been a rise in demand for stays. The tourism sector has grown manifold with the introduction of new and innovative products and experiences. It is recognized as a major instrument of employment creation, livelihood improvement and inclusive growth. Tourism development ke liye Odisha mein aseem scope hai. Unlimited uh, opportunities are there. Hamare paas 18 wildlife sanctuary hai, 2 national park hai. Hamare paas Similipal mein project tiger hai aur hamare paas Vidarkani ka mein project crocodile hai jahan pe jo पूरे दुनिया में ऐसे दो तीन जगह पे हैं एक ऑस्ट्रेलिया में है और एक भितरकनिका में है सो हमारे पास अट्रैक्शंस की कमी नहीं है दिस थ्री डे एग्जीबिशन आल्सो शोकेस्ड न्यू बिजनेस ओरिजिन फॉर फर्दर इंप्रूवमेंट ऑफ ट्रैवल ट्रेड एक्टिविटीज इन द कंट्री द टूरिज्म फेयर इज नॉट जस्ट टू अट्रैक्ट ट्रेड बायर्स एंड सेलर्स फ्रॉम वेरियस सेक्टर्स बट आल्सो टू ब्रिंग अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ ट्रैवलर्स सीकिंग द बेस्ट पैकेजेस फॉर होटल्स एंड टूर्स इंडीड द टूरिज्म फेयर इन ओडिशास टूरिज्म इंडस्ट्री ब्रॉड टुगेदर द लोकल ट्रैवल इंडस्ट्री ट्रैवल एंथुजियास एंड अदर एसोसिएटेड बिजनेसेस अंडर वन रूफ It's time for me to wrap up today's episode. We'll be back next week at the same time. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of South Asia today. Goodbye and take care.